while it's true that we are separated by a little bit of geography here in the state, uh, you know, the soybean farmer and the cattle farmer here in Arkansas have a chance to really uh, work together. Uh, you know, uh, soybeans have an, a, an incredible amount of protein and, and energy and amino acids and things like that. So, you know, the product that they're growing there really are good for cattle producers and uh, and the cattle diet and uh, whenever you have a state like arkansas that grows a lot of soybeans uh, you know ships a lot of soybeans into to different livestock feeds and and even poultry feeds you know the two are absolutely going to meet and if you know if you're a producer out there and uh, you're not looking at at soybeans you really ought to try you know at least to explore those possibilities maybe talk with uh uh, you know, whoever is managing your feed uh, operation or, or your vet or, or even extension and say, you know, what are my options for soy and how could I go about getting it and, and feeding it? How does that look for my, my operation? I, I think most cattle producers that, that may not be using it would be surprised and, and uh, excited to find that extra feed source from here locally in Arkansas. You know, there's a lot of money that's spent on genetics and cattle uh, now trying to, to uh, best raise the end product, our end product, which is beef. Um, and uh, you can you can have all the genetics, you can have the best genetics that this country has to offer and they're really good. Uh, but if you're not having the proper nutrition program, the proper feeding program, uh, your genetics are not gonna produce what you really want. And that is, you know, that quality beef, that quality cow uh, that will bring the, bring the top of the market whenever you sell or, or whether that be at your local livestock barn or uh, if you're um, selling on, on the grid. We like using soybeans in our feed ingredients here on the farm with our livestock. Uh, it's something we raise here on the farm. We may not process it here on the farm, but it's a, a byproduct from the soybeans that we use. It's a good source of high protein. And then, you know, we feel like that, you know, we like to use something that we raise here on the farm, kind of something we know where it comes from. We don't feed whole soybeans. There's, there's a little issue with whole soybeans. Uh, you know, unless you roast them or do something like that, and that's a, a you know a bigger process that we want to get into here on the farm. So we we mainly just feed the soybean meal, which is a byproduct, of crushing the soybean, extracting the oil, and this, that's what you get left over. <coughs> Excuse me, that's what you get left over. It's just we just try to take those extra steps out, saves us some time, saves us some money, and then we don't have to worry about the side effects of feeding whole soybeans some to, to cattle. There's a little toxicity issue there when you, when you do that. Uh, soybean meal runs about 42-43% protein. It's really high so you don't have to, you can cut the amount back that you feed. You don't have to feed a whole lot of it to get that big bang for your for your buck. There, there has certainly been an uptick especially over the COVID months uh, of you know people seeking out that uh, that pasture to plate type beef and there are a lot of producers in Arkansas that uh, you know are, are wanting to sell or wanting to and actually selling directly to consumers, whether it be at a farmer's market or directly off their farm. And so you know you take a locally grown uh, grain or a locally grown bean like like the Arkansas soybean, put it in your cattle's uh, you know nutrition plan and in the cattle feed, and you know those consumers are able to to support two different local. Um, producers, the cattle producers and the soybean producers, 